it's okay for us to begin. I will start screen sharing in uh, in just a second so we can capture this in the recording. And we are going live in three, two, one, go. Perfect. All right. So hopefully you're in Miro with us. I'm just going to bring everyone to me. Uh, but if you don't want to join us in Miro, oh, there's so many cursors here. Let me just hide these really quick. So um, as I've said, oh, for the edition here. So uh, welcome everyone to the 14th edition of the uh, EMA Virtual Mirror User Groups. Uh, once again, a quick introduction. This is Raz here speaking. We're going to be your MCs for today's session when we talk about virtual event experience design 2.0 with two very talented um, Mironiers, uh, Alina Akiricai and Sara Gabioni of HUD. They will uh, be taking you in uh, the universe of amazing Miro board design and show you how they create various types of experiences for various types of clients and customers and how they use Miro to maximize engagements in a remote environment. And I think the best way for, for you to get to know them is to actually have them introduce themselves. So Alina, Sara, uh, uh, the stage is yours. Uh, please tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do and what's in line for us today. Hello, hello. <laughs> I, I go first. Thanks, Raz. You said my name correct, and that's because you're Romanian, just like me. <laughs> there you go. Uh, very nice uh, to see everybody here. Uh, like I said, old faces and new faces, uh, making uh, new friends today. Um, my name is Arina Kichai, and I'm a service designer. And currently, I uh, work for uh, Saudi Tourism Authority here in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, since the past seven years. Uh, and at my time uh, in Hewitt, uh, we experienced uh, a lot of uh, Miro requests, Miro events, and everything that has to do with Miro. Uh, uh, and I'm kind of like self-taught into, into Miro. Uh, I'm still discovering, I'm still learning like many of you. And definitely, I just want to showcase today uh, our process, our thought process into how to plan, design, and, and run uh, events, virtual events in, in Miro, and how we can sprinkle some awesomeness in, into them, some bring some life and uh, uh, some of the physical uh, space also that we clearly missed during uh, COVID times. Yeah, pass, uh, pass you the mic, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alina. Uh, Sarah, uh, do you want to give us a, a quick 101 of who Sarah is, just briefly? Definitely. Can you hear me? Because I just drop off and was like i was freaking out i was like no not right now okay. gonna... <laughs> <Wow, thank laughs> introduce myself all right i'm here so uh hello everyone uh, i'm sarah gabioni you actually pronounced my uh, last name correctly even though you're not italian but you, you're quite good with last name right and um yeah i'm a service designer um based in milan but i work for you um, as a service designer and a design lead, and I work for a, a private company and government entities that do uh, bus innovation uh, through also uh, Miro boards. We use uh, Miro for basically everything. And um, last but not least, uh, I strongly collaborate with uh, Miro, with Joanna, and with the, the Miro team. Uh, in delivering uh, these such incredible uh, online uh, experiences. So super nice, super glad to have a time to show you all what we have been cooking all this year together because we designed quite many boards and uh, it's nice to have the chance to show just few of them uh, because of the sake of time. But if we had like so many hours, we will fill them all with uh, such incredible design. So yes. This is, this is me and let, let's start. Brilliant. Thank you so much to both of you for the quick introduction. And now folks, before we kick off with the actual presentation, which I know all of you are, are keen to, to look at, just gonna give you a quick uh, run through of some of the, the things you need to know about Miro. And as you will be interacting into the board, I just added the board link into the Zoom chat once more for those of you who just joined us. So just a few pro tips here. Uh, if you've never used Miro before, it's maybe your first few times or maybe in your first time, 
Uh, Miro is this, this infinite canvas where you can zoom in and out and have a lot of various uh, visual elements that you can play around with. Um, if you're in the board, you're probably going to see it like this with a lot of colorful cursors, which can get a little bit distracting when we're looking at 30 to 40 people. But what we highly encourage you to do is um, if you look here at, uh, at the top right, you can hide the collaborator's cursor just, just in case you want to uh, remove some of, some of that, that visual jitter that's going on. So moving around the board is pretty simple. If you have a trackpad, you just zoom in and out with two fingers. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a mouse, you just click and drag and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out like I am doing here. Um, we're going to be using certain elements on the board throughout the session. So if you need to duplicate a sticky note or an icon or anything on the board, you can just click that element and control and command D from duplicate. If you do anything by mistake, like moving uh, a board or sticky note by my mistake, or you type something and you want to undo it, like any other type of software, you can control or command Z. Halid, perfect, uh, good testing here on the, on the sticky notes. And one important thing, uh, elements on the board are locked. Uh, we try to admin lock every little element, but if you find an element that has not been locked, please don't move it around because it's just going to uh, slow down the, the session. So with that in mind, we're past some of the housekeeping items and moving forward with a quick icebreaker, which I've seen a lot of people already started doing. So what we want you to do right now is look here. I'm just going to bring everyone to me one more time. So for those of you who are in Miro, uh, we would like to get to understand where you're joining us from. So we have a very simple uh, icebreaker. You see this mute map here uh, in front of you. So what we would like you to do is look in the left-hand side panel, find the icon finder app. You can access it by clicking on the three dots and uh, it's sort of an, an icon that, that looks uh, like, like here on the left-hand side, like an eye. Then with the icon finder, look for an icon that best represents your country and just place it on the map in the appropriate area. So it's sort of a small geography test going on here. We really wanna see if you can find uh, the borders of your countries. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm sure you know, but uh, just uh, add a, add a uh, emoji here or an icon, let me do it. Uh, for, for ourselves as well. So we're from Transylvania. I'm just going to add a very, very classic vampire icon. That's okay with everybody. And we'll just encourage you to do the same. Let's say, take this little vampire here and put it near the Black Sea in Romania. There we go. That should do it. And after you place your icon, um, just hit C on uh, your keyboard or look in the left-hand side. You have the comment option. Just add a comment telling us uh, your name, just first name is okay, and the actual location. So let's uh, let's all do that now, so you can see where you're you're joining us from. Great stuff, good stuff, everyone. Thank you so much for taking part in our icebreaker. And now one last step before we actually hand over the digital microphone to Sara and Alina. Um, we have an area here for questions that might pop up. Uh, maybe if you have some questions now that you already want to ask, or if they're going to be popping up throughout the way you have two options. You can either use the sticky notes here in the in this red area, this pinkish area to add your questions or just pop them in the Zoom chat, whatever is most comfortable for you. Uh, we're gonna be centralizing everything. We'll be collecting all the questions and at the right time when we have Q&A, uh, we'll uh, make sure to direct those questions towards to the speakers, all right? Perfect. And now without further ado, uh, with, uh, with a lot of excitement, uh, Alina, Sara, the stage is yours. Uh, we're looking forward to, to seeing your uh, amazing work and it, the, the screen is yours. I'm actually going to stop sh screen sharing and allow you to take over. Thank you so much, Raz. Um, I'm going to start the, the conversation, but uh, me and Alina are really talkative. So she's going to jump in and we're going to make uh, a really interactive uh, uh, presentation. Uh, can you all see my screen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great. Um, I'm going to give you first an introduction of uh, what we have to we have chosen to show you. Um, just a real quick, quick. I see there is a, a person that is uh, clicking on the first board, uh, Sunil. If you can click out, so everybody uh, can see the can see the board. So. Uh, when first uh, uh, we decided to be part of this uh, beautiful initiative, we were um, actually quite um, also freaked out because we were like, okay, we have so many boards to, to show because we literally use Miro for any kind of 
uh, every kind of thing, personal things, uh, internal thing with uh, with the employees uh, as the onboarding uh, board for employees or brainstorming session or um, also fun activities uh, inside inside the company. So uh, we really start to understand what was the main thing where we wanted to uh, talk about uh, and uh, share with uh, with the community. Um, and we understood finally that um, what was really uh, could be really interesting for the people is uh, to understand how we 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 design and we provide uh, beautiful experiences online uh, in these uh, in little days that are really missing the part of uh, uh, the touch of, uh, of the, the really part of the touch point of the physical space in, in which the the meeting the 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 gathering of the, every people is happening. So uh, we provide to you today. Three examples, I hope we can go through all of them. Uh, three examples that better uh, express uh, the, um, the powerful uh, that Miro board has and the, the, the crazy things that we can do. We also wanted to uh, base our storytelling in terms of uh, uh, size and scale uh, that we can uh, design and we can uh, provide to our attendees and to the guests that joins uh, meetings uh, and workshop and hackathon and anything. Uh, that uh, that can be provided through through the boards. As you can see from the left, we're going to start talking about the Mirror Distributor 2020, which is actually the first collaboration that we had with Miro, and it was actually one of the most um, successful one because it was really all over the world with uh, uh, around 30,000 people. So it was really marked a really great start. Uh, between you and uh, Miro. Then uh, uh, we're going to zoom in from the space world. As you can see from near distributor, we go up in the space, up in the infinity, and see how activities can be designed, can be provided, and zoom in a little bit in the second board, in the second example, which is a more um, into a city scale. So we redesign concept, we redesign interaction, and we will see how um, they. Uh, in how the touch points and how the activities are provided in this kind of example. Lastly, we have a, a even more zoom in perspective. So let's go into the indoor and see how we can provide uh, experiences in the, into a more smaller scale. scale. In this case, is a, a winter dinner gala. So how can we make a beautiful dinner uh, experience and gala experience, but everything online? So I will leave the mic to Alina, uh, who is going to uh, bring you up in the space. And uh, yeah, Alina. Thank you. Uh, Okay, if you can close and I will share the screen myself. Yes, let me sh Did I close it? Yeah, uh, stop okay, sharing, then I will share. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so we took you guys into three spatial dimensions, let's say. Okay, awesome. So we are zoomed in into Miro Distributed 2020. Uh, as you can see, it's a, literally a space. Now, about this event, it was so uh, meaningful for us uh, to, to design because of its size. Um, it was a conference, it's a yearly conference uh, for Miro, uh, it takes place during three days, and we had 30,000 registrants. Um, and we had 3,000 viewers, per session with around 50 board designs. Now you can, uh, after the session or during, you can also have a look at behind the scenes. Uh, there's a little video, partially I speak in English and there is some Arabic and you also will see uh, some uh, familiar faces, for example, Mahmoud. Um, going back to, to this uh, colossal project, we call it stellar project. Um, we had to, to think about how to design uh, something that is uh, so immersive, uh, captivating for people all around the world. Uh, and this task was, of course, very difficult. Um, 
all we had to do is understand first what would be uh, the agenda, um, uh, what would be, for example, Sarah, if you can go to the Miro Distributed Sketchboard, let's show them how it all started. Uh, yeah, so dear, you saw the, the uh, end result and this is uh, the work in progress. It all started completely messy, right? So you, ha you have lots of ideas floating around. Um, you can zoom in, Sarah, we'll have uh, the section where we brainstorm about the theme. Uh, we have uh, the metaphor, uh, examples, you know, best practices. So when you have such a huge scale of event, you need to close on, on the idea, you know? What is it, for example, are you ha hosting an event for a coffee shop? Then obviously the idea has to be around coffee. Um, and, but this time, because Miro has already um, uh, relations to uh, universe, you know, we had, they have the Miroverse, so they thought, okay, let's do it around um, uh, the, the theme of the space. So then we brainstorm, what are the, the space metaphors we can use about, what are the visual elements we can do? Um, and these are just about the visuals. We looked at the experience map uh, of the people throughout the three days. What will they do? What will they see? What will they interact? And this is all uh, laid out here. Um, we looked at the little uh, boards. You have, you know, the, the blue ones are the main boards and then you have sub boards. And I will, sh uh, Sarah will show you in a while how to navigate between these things and you can see how complex the space is actually <laughs> in the end. Uh, we looked at uh, spaces to recharge, for example, uh, a cafe, a spa, not only at the spaces where people should work, uh, not only at the elements where, you know, uh, you'll, you'll have the conferences uh, boards, you have the workshop boards, but also, what are the things people can do in their break, how people should uh, meet each other and et cetera. Now we'll show you a, a really cool board. Uh, it's called the, um, uh, the one for the, uh, the boarding pass that Sarah designed. And um, what's amazing about this is that, you know, in, in physical spaces, you would end up with people exchanging numbers, people exchanging business cards and things like that. But in a huge event like this, how can you make sure that, you know, people could connect with also uh, uh, advertise themselves? You would find very creative ways in which people chose to stand out and uh, have these uh, little boarding passes uh it, like in a means of expressing themselves so they would um, write their space name uh they would add all these details about themselves and if you zoom out you will see some of them they really do uh, attract your attention there's also a spaceship <laughs> so, <laughs> it's <Yeah>. hilarious <laughs> it's like, uh it, it was of course uh how to control these kind of things you would have uh, people going in, cleaning about a little bit uh, these name tags. We'll have people helping uh, them to, to arrange their images. So it was it was a full-fledged service that we offered uh, during uh, Miro Distributed. Um, all the boards that you can also explore uh, when you click uh, Miro Distributed board, they are all in the same theme, you know, they have all the same colors. It's like, it's like a design uh, system, I would say. Uh, you will look at, you know, you have uh, wormholes and comets and uh, spaceships and rockets and etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, this is the feedback board, you know, it's about how they feel, uh, what would they experience, what, how, how did they enjoy uh, attendees and, uh, etc. There's another place I would like to take you and it's also uh, about having a more relaxed time is the spa. Um, that's, yeah, if you zoom in, it's uh, next to that astronaut who's really chilling. 
So what, how would you do a spa in an, a virtual event, right? Well, you can just go and there, there was a, a, a person, she's really talented and it was a guided meditation session and uh, she offered this session uh, through, uh, you know, she was guiding you through through the methods and also you can have, you know, videos on how to do meditation. You know, it's backed up by music. Uh, so we try to make up for the lack of, of uh, spatial dimension or physical dimension um, in, in Miro. And it offers uh, limitless possibilities, uh, really. So this is how people would navigate, you know. Um, we, yes, the playground, of course. And this is something that many events are missing, even the, the physical events. Uh, it's made for, for families. What would you, how would you keep your kids uh, to, to play cool while you are trying to focus on an event? So, okay, you can give him access to the playground in Miro and let him explore ways in which he can, for example, make a puzzle or create his alien or uh, uh, take the astronaut home. It's really, they, you can see that kids, they, they did that and they really enjoyed. So make it a 360 experience outside the realm of only like one-to-one -one aiming, to aiming to deliver some information to somebody. Uh, make it more fun. So think about above and uh, outside uh, this uh, realm. Um, this is an example of, of the boards. How do they look like after? Uh, all the events they had, uh, you know, you have the speakers, um, their information, also a video recording, uh, feedback, examples, and materials that people would access after. Uh, Miro was uh, finished. Uh, so just to make sure, you know, everybody is on board and they can access uh, these materials after the event. So here, if we zoom out again, um, you would see in the center, you have this uh, mothership, let's say, uh, if people are watch Star Wars and we have some geeks around. Uh, that was our inspiration. And around you have all these uh, little ships. They are about uh, all the uh, topics and speakers that uh, uh, took place, all the, the talks that took place during the event, the three days event, with their image, their name, and the link to their board. Uh, so, of course, everybody could uh, relate back, back to, to that specific talk later on. Um, so the, the purpose was definitely uh, what is the center of attention and what are the other things that are, are nice to have, you know, from information about Miro uh, and Zoom, uh, from code of conduct. Of course, you know, you have a huge event. You need something about code of conduct. Uh, what are the do's and don'ts during such event? Um, and then you'll have the agenda. <laughs> it's really fun. Uh, yeah. And the agenda, which will be uh, for three days, you can see all, all the things that were happening. And people would navigate back and forth uh, uh, to these boards. For any type of event, I really suggest that, you know, you give people enough uh, information, uh, you welcome uh, people to, to your event, you have uh, shortcuts to your boards, like you see in the left hand side, uh, you have the list of uh, all the shortcuts to the boards, so people will not be lost and trying to think, oh, where was the spa, let me see, so they can go and also they can access back all, all the sessions, uh, make sure it's really accessible and fun at the same time. While we were playing all these, you could also uh, click and play some music. That's the selection of Sarah. <laughs> yeah. And you one still thing, have it. I still have it, yes, yes. People are actually commenting on, on the YouTube playlist. And um, <laughs> if I can jump in, Alina, I think it's also, yes. um, it's also important to highlight 
uh, mm-hmm. how we wanted. And then this one is actually a factor that you will see in also in the other, in the other example, how we wanted to um, be as holistic as possible. So the one dimension, the virtual dimension is uh, sometimes sucks because you cannot really uh, taste, feel, hear, you know, you cannot really be fully engaged. So what the, our must have in this kind of engagement is uh, to brainstorm and think how we can really make any kind of interaction possible. So uh, that's why you see here the music, uh, if you zoom out, so, I don't know if you have, uh, if you click on the Lex Explorer button, so you mm-hmm. can explore the board as you prefer and jump in and out from the board. So from the music, as I was saying, if you zoom out, uh, we try to characterize each day with a different color. So we also wanted to make it interesting every day since it's three days and uh, events, make it different every time, but yet, also functional for our client, in this case, uh, Miro. So try to also design component elements that can be every time iterated for their use, for their <laughs> agenda, for your for their work. So you know how uh, even to work I, until the last day, you never know how the agenda will be, if the speaker will be changed, uh, if the activity will uh, will be skipped or will be add new activity. So also the way that we <laughs> structure Sorry, Alina? No, no, nothing. Uh, okay, I was hearing something. So also, also, I was saying the way that we uh, decide to structure um, the, the board. So each component make it singular component in order for the, our, uh, the final um, owner of the board is able to, to change and edit. So it's really important to keep the really high engagement visual um, uh, visual uh, graphic, but also uh, make sure that the board is uh, easy to manage and uh, um, easy to change every time. Yeah, yeah, I, I back up on that because I remember we had to change the name so many times, the pictures to match the speaker and etc. And then we found out, okay, we have to really uh, uh, we had to uh, import all these images one by one as PNG files. They had to be the, the right uh, size, not to be too pixelated and not to be too heavy, uh, not to overwhelm the board. Uh, but definitely, uh, I heard people that, you know, it took a lot of, of computing power uh, to, to load it in the end because mm-hmm. it's quite heavy visually. Uh, all in all, it was an amazing, I think, experience. We had great feedback about it, and we would really like think that this is an iconic project uh, for us. And uh, yeah, I think well, that's that's about it about Miro distributed. Um, I don't think we're missing anything here. Uh, it was it was a colossal project, and we had lots of support uh, from Miro team, um, and with content, with you know, it takes a lot of collaboration because we're working on two different continents, guys. So uh, it was like a feedback at 7 p.m. We finish our work. Their their day starts. You know, it was quite an adventure. Totally worth it. We really loved uh, working uh, with uh, with Miro team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So let's jump to the to the next uh, to the next example. Let's see. Oh, I see that maybe it's a little bit uh, moved Move. around, but let's fix it right away. All right. So uh, the other example it's uh, about uh, as we said a little um, a little town. So we create we customize the perfect town for our client. This case is. Uh, the Ministry of Communication Technology uh, in Saudi. And uh, for the for this, Alina did a quite a great, amazing work. Uh, if you want to uh, introduce the overall uh, project, Alina. Yeah, I will do that because la- yours is last one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> we took another order. Uh, this one, it was done for, like, as Sarah said, Ministry of Communication Information Technology. It's a very different project because it's done for a government institution. And we are asking for uh, people to participate 
in such an event, people that never had such interaction before. And you have to think of a way that is really simple and easy to navigate uh, this board. So we make it clean and neat. Uh, what this uh, event was about, uh, it was about making sure that Saudi Arabia is getting a higher score into the um, uh, innovation uh, global index. Uh, so how to do that? Do you have to take a step back and they had to think this all starts with students uh, and, and patent holders, research students. Uh, the focus was in uh, innovation, like uh, 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 Digital innovation. It, it was a focus was on uh, information technology and and uh, digital products. Uh, so we designed this space uh, to be familiar for students. So it's if you look at it, you zoom in. It it looks like a little campus. You would have a library. You will have a lecture hall um, and coffee shop and information center, fitness center feedback wall and this was about you know just you you will see some sprinkles that we added extra of course even a mosque i mean you know people here you uh they have to take prayer uh, breaks so we need to make sure that we are the event is shaped around uh prayer time so for example you'll have a prayer break around noon of course that merges with the lunch break so that would be a huge break and then around three and etc so we keep a track of that we give people their time and their break. Uh, yeah, you can see it here. And then, uh, of course, yeah, we have all the elements. This and on the right side, on the left side, uh, you would definitely see the legend. And these are the common uh, common uh, language that we always use. We definitely use a legend uh, and some guidelines about all the boards and ground rules. For example, have a positive attitude open your camera, everybody wants to see everybody. I mean, it's, it was during the time where uh, we were on lockdown, people wouldn't go out of their house, etc. So it was just uh, trying to humanize it a bit more. We can explore some of uh, this board. Um, we can go to where? Lecture hall? Lecture hall let's, is a good- Let's go to the lecture hall, yes. Yes, this is awesome. So uh, this is where all the talks were, were taking place. And you can see it looks like a lecture hall and you have the speaker here on the right side. Who is this person? A little bit about him. And then uh, also you have shortcuts, uh, like little buttons or how to go back to the innovation campus. So we thought about, you know, how people would navigate with back and forth between uh, boards. Uh, you'll have presentations and also on the side until people would will join in, not to make it a dull thing. We wanted to add um, inspirational videos. So we will just drag and drop these on, on the backstage, on the, on the stage itself. And uh, also you could see there is like a applause after the speaker would finish his talk. And, you know, you just try to sprinkle a bit of, uh, like make things more engaging, uh, bring the wow factors, uplift the mood uh, with music, with applause, with whatever that, that can be to ensure that these people would really stay uh, and see that this event is worthwhile for them. Mm -hmm. um, what else we can explore? Back to the innovation campus. Also, we have a library, photo gallery, about the partnership. Yeah, I think the library is nice to have. Also, and the cafe, the cafe shop, the coffee shop. Yes. Okay, cool. This is the library. So um, for digital, the, the patent holders, these are people that already um uh, graduated and they have their patents registered and and so on and so forth and we kind of collected uh, a bunch of of relevant materials for them to relate back to uh in order to make their patent uh, to enhance their patent and and so on whatever is that relevant
Uh, and in the coffee shop, uh, we, that was the place where people, uh, we will enable them to go and take their breaks. And because there are still many of them, they didn't know it, uh, them, each other. We had a little activity here, uh, similar to the boarding pass, but this is a name tag that you would find, like it's a common thing at schools, right, universities. Uh, so you will see their pictures, you know, uh, their contact details, uh, what are their hobbies, and also um, what is their uh, product about uh, in the end. So they can just, you know, just try to break the ice a little bit. And at the same time, this is like a simple activity to enable people to, to use Miro because many of them, they don't know how to. So first thing you want to do when people join, uh, you want to break the ice, uh, make, make them comfortable because they would see it's a completely new program, right? And you know that if, even if you would share the link for people to practice, many of them, they won't do that. So ideally, take five minutes at the beginning of your event and let them uh, practice uh, with this name tag. And the way we did it, it was actually breakout rooms. So you will have people going one-on-one, -on -one, okay, interviewing each other and writing uh, each other's uh, name tag. So for example, it's me and Sara. I will interview Sara and I will write down uh, her name and you can see the, uh, the room numbers and they would go there and etc. So we did this in two rounds, make sure people really got to practice this exercise and they would be ready for what is to follow. Um, this was an event that lasted uh, a full uh, two days and they really had to be comfortable to step in uh, the game and start, you know, doing their uh, their activities uh, in teams. If I can uh, jump in, Alina, just uh, a second. Um, yeah. I would like also to um, give another uh, suggestion what we usually uh, do when we have uh, uh, people that, that maybe they're not familiar with Miro, Miro or we don't really know uh, what are the experience with technology. When we um, design a board, we don't only design the board, but we think about also the overall experience. So uh, we, we usually like to share with them an onboarding guide a couple of days before with uh, all the instruction, how to use Miro, how to access it. Um, so just making sure that they can have a read. And of course, also, as Alina, uh, you said, that you're not sure that they're gonna read it. So we also plan an icebreaker that works also as a, a, as a gym for them to get practice and uh, start the two days workshop. But uh, best practice is also to, to share an um, onboarding guide with, uh, with links and with, um, with steps uh, to help them register or uh, just you know, um, go, around, uh, go around the board. Definitely. And also we have uh, an interesting saying and people uh, in the design world would know it is very fam famous, just uh, learn by doing and doing mm -hmm. not talking. <laughs> so just get into it and uh, overcome your fear of the new. Uh, this board is, you know, Miro is about practicing, is about prototyping, and it's, it's meant to be a whiteboard where you can design things. Um, I know let's that- the, uh, I was thinking, let's go to the feedback wall. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Um, I wanted to add just kind of wrap up. Yeah, uh, the end of the day when everybody would be just, you know, a bit tired, a bit exhausted, but we really want to hear about everybody, how, how they feel like, and not only with post-its, but also try to express uh, with, with stickers and that would make it absolutely more fun. Uh, yeah. This really allowed everybody to express themselves, introverts, extroverts, etc. Uh, we want to hear uh, about mm -hmm. their opinion and learn, always develop uh, and uh, enhance enhance our designs. We couldn't really do it without the help of our designers. Of course, me and Sarah, we are designers ourselves, but we had. Uh, 
in the back some uh, our team that are uh, more specialized into illustrations uh, and graphic design. So it's it's definitely important that you have such uh, talents around you that would visualize all your ideas. You know, mm -hmm. although you have everything set up, you know how it should go. You just need to make to have it and make sense and and be uh, visually appealing um, and memorable, of course. People, this is what people would remember, right? It's like, oh, I participated in an event and the space was a city um, bird's eye view and I had the lounge and etc. We always have that extra little bit of, of fun stuff. Uh, and we had, uh, Sarah, if you know that the commonalities of feedback from all the events that we have, it's like, ugh, it was too short. We didn't have enough time to explore mm -hmm. all the, the different locations and exciting things because you know the workshop is is uh, quite intense also not only fun you have to focus on on doing things uh so yeah that was uh that was mcat's innovation award uh campus and uh, guys for me you know if you have any questions just uh, drop write them on the posters and i will answer uh, after now I'll pass the mic to Sarah uh, to, to present the last board. Yeah, thank you so much, Alina. Um, you. Yes, the last board, uh, differently from uh, the other two, uh, is a more of a fun, uh, it's a more for fun and, uh, you know, meeting, uh, it's a gala, it's a dinner. So it's a different portfolio. So uh, we saw more a conference, um, a conference experience, more a workshop experience uh, with the uh, design thinking uh, activities, and this one. Let's jump into this uh, uh, into this gala. So here, the purpose is different. We want to engage people for a couple of hours, and we want to create a story. Uh, this time, also, you see the format is different because uh, uh, we want we wanted the people to go through um, to go through an actual uh, one event shot. So um, there was a, a strict uh, storytelling and so, uh, and agenda to follow uh, within a couple of hours. So the, the the goal is different and the content is different. Uh, if you jump into the board you realize that you jump uh, at the beginning of our of our uh, events. Um, this event was uh, for uh, a Miro internal uh, meetings uh, all over the world, it had around 200 people. And um, it has to combine uh, both, uh, um, as always I said, um, any kind of uh, uh, interaction. So how, how can we, how, we, how can we structure an event online and make sure that people have fun and uh, expressing themselves and interact with each other uh, in a more um, creative way? And, um, and so, screen, so in here, we started with uh, uh, the invitation. So always, uh, if you notice, all across the board that we show you, uh, we always make a moment where people need to understand what they are, what are we asking them to do, and what are the expectations, the final expectations. So always uh, make sure that the person that jump into your board know exactly what to do and how to navigate the board. So in this case, uh, our structure are into invitation uh, format with a um, fancy invitation. And uh, we explain to them the steps that um, the person will go through. We want them to go to a gala. So we thought, how should we make them prepare and uh, create the hype for the special events? So what we, we thought about is uh, a first step of, uh, of activities where we ask them to dress up, to, um, to put some makeup and to sparkle a little bit uh, their outfit and also their uh, the vibes. So in here we design uh, an indoor space where people can actually uh, move around and uh, interact with different kind of touch points. Uh, which was important for us to make this, the experience more uh, more interesting and more dynamic. So in here we attach some uh, some video to how make a nice uh, nice filters for the camera. 
to make some uh, some nice makeup to add the, the special background uh, that is uh, was um, related with the with the experience and then of course the dress so uh, we thought about uh, finding nice red carpet dress and make it customized uh, customized for each of them how we're gonna do that we thought about making them simply add their beautiful face in the in the outfit so this looks really easy and um, it's actually what we wanted to reach the activity should be easy to be should be fun and not too complicated to understand so is uh we thought about uh, also inclusivity how can we make sure that people feel inclusive in every in every situation so if you see we have different body and shapes uh, and uh, different uh, hairstyles so we wanted to make sure mostly when we talk about events all across the globe to make it customizable customizable for the culture so if you see before it was a saudi um based uh, client the saudi based um registrants and attendees in this case it, it was really customized for the for the for the place for the uh, context in this case uh, is a global so we have to switch mentality we have to switch uh, um also um communications which is a, a really important um for the people that we interact with so in this case uh, we create not only the outfit but we also give some nice other tools uh, to go with so uh, choose your best date for the night uh, or vote your best outfit uh, or giving feedback uh, to the to the dress so every time that we design a uh, activity we always think of, as a side a little activity with the aim uh, to make people connect with each other and uh, start uh, conversations. Always adding videos, always adding, uh, uh, if we can, additional links uh, to make everything more uh, engaging and um, explorative. The first step was uh, the, um, the Instagram moment, the, the, black, uh, the backdrop uh, uh, mirror, uh, brand mirror. So, in every time that we think about an experience, we think about also how it can be communicated outside because we want to, uh, to people to share it. We want people to get to know what we are doing, uh, to non, not only know the activity, but to know also the brand. And they always could, um, since it's a strong visual effect, uh, is a really good for also communication uh, and uh, marketing, marketing side. So, uh, adding a mirror hashtag, uh, the hashtag of the event, adding a nice corner for people to take pictures and share it uh, is something that we always take in consideration to make the board uh, talk as much as possible to, to the people also outside the event that they're not participating at the moment. And this is the third step. The, then we go into the actual gala. And uh, the, the client is in this case uh, had the need, the, the need of uh, communicating a surprise. So also thinking of a removable component to make also the wire effect. In this case, it was a special guest having a speech. So how can we make it a surprise? So thinking about also um, different components to move and to, uh, to move and discover around the, uh, like along the, the night in this case. Next step is the dinner. So also here challenging, different time zone. Uh, you're having dinner, what is quite sad to have a dinner just in front of the, the screen and uh, you're not really interacting with anyone. So uh, we thought about, uh, let's break them down into uh, breakout rooms so we can enable more conversation because um, it was, to, as I said, 200 people, and until now it was quite different, quite mm, difficult communicated. So we also need to think a time where we can make our our attendees more comfortable and start also talking, which is a, a big aspect uh, of uh, of an event. So always uh, give them guidelines of what to do and how to do it, and then. In this case, we create a, a table, a dinner table for the people to uh, to meet. So following the breakout number, 
the team could gather together and share uh, the dish that they were having. Um, some of them uh, upload their own dish they were actually having. Some of them just share the, prefer the best uh, dish um, of the country, of the favorite dish. Um, they also bring themselves from the red carpet, they bring it here. So there was a continuity of, uh, of, um, of, the, of the story. So the, the, the avatar will, uh, will go through the experience uh, um, with them. So in here, we have um, many tables uh, with, uh, with dishes, uh, with also information about the person and the, the dish. And there's also a nice exchange of uh, culture uh, and, uh, and lifestyle. Almost final, we have the stage. Of course, in the dinner gala, we have, a, have an a important talk and we have also words. So in here we create, uh, as you see also in the lecture hall, we create a stage for the person to upload the PDF and, uh, and make the speech. And in this case, uh, here there are some of the awarding people uh, from Miro in that time. So. Uh, we create a customized uh, award for person to also, in this case, screenshot and share it on social media because, as I said, it's also an aspect to consider if we want to make uh, the board, if you want to make people talking about your board, talking about your brand and what you're doing. So really show off um, your, your company and, and your brand as much as possible. So in here, people were listening to the person that were having a speech and congratulating with the, with the awarding person. Finally, it's time to go. So we have the final, um, the final boards in which we always wanted to have a feedback from people, uh, understanding how we can improve, understanding their emotion, their reaction. So uh, it's always an aspect that we uh, always integrate into our uh, experiences. So. The set of uh, icons that you also saw before, you can see it here, and people could take it and uh, and use it. We also thought about a thank you a thank you card. So in this case, the person could actually have a personal thank you for someone else. They could uh, tag the person and read the thank you the thank you card. And finally, where should we go back to? So uh, you experienced today with the location uh, dropping your position, we put it in the end because uh, we want our limousine to bring you back uh, to the place where, uh, where you stay. So uh, this was uh, the, client, the, final, uh, the final activity. In yeah, here, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so it's awesome. I mean, the ease of, of a navigation in, in this particular board is, is really, uh, smooth uh, comparing to the other ones because you just have to keep on scrolling to uh, right on on the next uh, on the next section. So that was you know you can you can really go uh, ahead and design uh, several boards that have subboards and subboards and and so on linked to each other, or you can have a really smooth flow which is very simple and and accessible for everybody. Yeah, definitely. And also, as you mentioned before, Alina, the technical aspect is always important to take in consideration, even though it's not really the funny part. So as you can see here, the board is huge. So we yeah. really had to work with our the visual design team to make uh, the components light because we want to we, we, we want to ensure the smoothest experience to all the 200 participants join at the same time in one board, which is quite heavy. So also exporting the right uh, format uh, with the right uh, number of components is not something that you would mm, consider in the end. It, it, you should be planning this, uh, the amount of content that you want to put on your, on your board. So yes, I think uh, also for this one is uh, it's it. Uh, Ras, I think we are we were we did good with the timing, no? Oh, that was perfect. <laughs> they were actually just chatting here with Anna, like, wow, this is so on point. Like the timing was was perfect. And <laughs> like, let, let me let me tell, like we we've seen these boards before because we kind of prepared for everything. But folks, 
once you kind of get them to go through the flow and, sh and kind of share the process and then just kind of the, the visual walkthrough, I think it's, it's personally from my perspective, it's a really, really great, great job. And I think uh, everyone understands how much work is behind uh, what we see here. I mean, you just look at the finished product and you say like, wow, this is cool. This is nice. But every little element and the graphic designs, the communication and the story and the concept beforehand, like everything really has to work together. Otherwise, things feel disconnected. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is amazing and that was for example for distributed we were uh working for three full weeks uh if i remember well wow. different time zones again uh different teams and meeting a lot of people it was really really cool very exciting moment uh for us mm -hmm. and you know that kind of kicked off uh another level of collaboration with Miro and now Sarah is engaged in, in designing uh, Miro events until next year. There are events that are uh, seasonal and every season, you know, the theme is changing. You had for uh, uh, spring, winter, of course, activities, uh, different activities on the board. Uh, for example, you had to customize your avatar with gloves and all sorts of winter accessories. Uh, and the theme was about reaching the peak of, uh, of a mountain. Really exciting stuff. So just uh, uh, stick around and, and watch out for these Miro events because they are really cool and interesting. Awesome. We can wait. And uh, Alina, sorry, are you ready for the questions? And I will we'll kind of kick off with those. You ready? Yep. Let's go. Let's yeah, we can also go to the mirror board. So the first one says, so what's the process tools and the software that you use to design these boards? Could you share any specific resources for us to learn? Awesome. You want to take it, Alina? Yeah, yeah, sure. Very simple, very clean. It's Miro. Everything is happening in Miro. And then whatever cannot be designed in Miro, that's, that is Illustrator. Uh, so it's so simple. Illustrator, you copy pa paste, you you drop it there, or you export it as a PNG. Um, but Miro has lots of resources. Uh, for example, if you want to prototype a uh, uh, a website, you can do that just in Miro. It has so many uh, amazing add-ons and applications uh, uh, to use. Uh, so you start with the idea. Uh, you do like a, a sketchboard, uh, you identify uh, your uh, audience, what are their needs, where are they from, uh, just to understand, you know, the complexity of your event, uh, how many will you have to host. Uh, of course, what is uh, the output, what do you want to achieve by the event, and this will impact uh, the, the way you will design uh, your uh, your event, your board, and all, all the uh, sort of uh, elements in there. Um, and look at the flow of the event from the moment people register. That's why we call it like an event experience, a virtual experience design, because it's all about end to end from people, from the moment people are registered, the moment they are aware, and the moment they learn about Miro until they leave. Uh, uh, the event and what happens after, how they will have access, how they will brag about it, etc. Uh, so it's pretty simple. Uh, once you get into Miro, uh, you will see uh, its full uh, capacity. I hope that answers the question. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, maybe I, I can give you just a little um, important uh, trick for people that uh, will thank me later. If you export in PNG, it's not really high. Exporting as WG is super high, so you can really make people zoom, zoom, zoom in. But it's a little bit maybe uh, heavy. So just play with PNG as WG, and uh, as much as you can, uh, text for sure, keeping on Miro to edit every time, and you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. Try to make your visual elements. Uh, individual so you can move around and play around unless you think it's like a fixed map uh, but uh, I forgot to mention uh, the way we designed the city uh, for MCIT because MCIT had uh, two days some events would have three days uh, you would see uh, he would design something like a, 
uh, Global Service Jam uh, fully on Miro. And for three days, we had the event and the city building up. So you would start with a, a city that's full of cranes and buildings are not fully completed and etc. And the second day, you would see other buildings popping up in the same map. And the third day, you would see fireworks, hot air balloons, a bit more uh, a map that looks more celebratory. Uh, so definitely, again, look at how your experience, wh what is your experience uh, supposed to be for, for the whole uh, time of the event? And then you can sprinkle those wow factors uh, in that and make it fun. Awesome. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, so for the next question, we have pasted the answer from the chat. So I'll move to the third one. So how did you link the presenters into the lecture hall? Was it an embedded live stream or how did you do it? How did we lead the presenters into the mirror? How did how, you link the presenters? How, how do you, I think it's more about connection. Yeah. yeah. How, how did people bounce in between the mural board and the actual presentations that they were giving as part of the conference? We had a hack. So some people uh, during the times that presenters are switching, of course, everything happened in Zoom, right? Uh, when presenters are switching, we will pre prepare the PDFs and then uh, we will uh, put the presentations on that uh, screen, fake screen <laughs> in the lecture hall, and then we'll prepare those slides so they can just click next. It's actually a PDF, uh, and once you click next page, you know, it loads, and, and this is how uh, you, you can have a presentation, the equivalent of Keynote or, Power, uh, yeah, or PowerPoint, but it's a PDF in Miro. Uh, and yeah, it was easy because they would just share their screen and, and play and press next. Mm -hmm. okay. Awesome, perfect. Yeah. The next one that we have here, so the workshops and the conference were two, three days. What was the time spent on each board? Was it asynchronous or did you let them move around on their own for eight hours? I, I think this uh, from I think it, uh, pr uh, perspective, how, how old? I think this one, uh, it, it's, it's, as, uh, as Alina was saying, that we have like a, a back, uh, back the scene of people working. So uh, as she's saying, uh, as we switch presenter, we switch uh, presentation, the same is happens with the, with the different days. So as we finish first day, we will upload the new, the new town, the new mission control, the, the, the different day uh, environment, uh, so that the day after in the morning, people will find uh, in the same link. So we always try to minimize the link to not make people confused. So keep the same link and maybe yeah. have a back, back, um, a back, um, a backhand uh, um, board for you to save your your so your uh, your design, and then just upload, have everything ready, and upload. Uh, from a day to another, the new design, from one presentation to another, uh, the, the PDF and, and so on. So um, for the meal distributed, the person will see only one day, first day. Second day, they will see the first day, and the second day, because we want to, people also to go and watch um, the board from the day before uh, speakers. So we want to people see what happened the day before and the third day they will see everything. So in the end, they will they will have be able to explore all the three day. Mm -hmm. So and the workshop we didn't get into what is the workshop about because uh, for example for MCIT we would have the agenda and that certain activities and then they would the participants would go in the breakout rooms and they will have uh, their time like one hour thirty minutes whatever to do their work and uh, with uh, the purpose of brainstorming, coming up with ideas, refining, uh, putting presentations together and et cetera. So whatever the purpose of the workshop is, uh, we gave them just enough time. Uh, then we would come back together, uh, people would present, we would assess, uh, and then we will have uh, the refinement and stuff. So we, uh, for our workshops in general, for, we follow the model of uh, uh, research and understanding. Uh, we have ideation, design, uh, and then presentations. So this is what 
kind of takes place uh, besides the fun. <laughs> Got it. Awesome answer. Thank you. How long and how many people you use to design these? Uh, and one more specific question about the distributed board. So how long did it take to create these? Yeah, I think you can kind of answer these as a bundle. Yeah. Like how many, how big was the team and just how much time was put into this? Well, I, I think kind of all Hewitt eventually got swallowed by distributed and in certain ways. Uh, we end up uh, people jumping in and out. Uh, there were about 15 at some point because we had so many boards that needed a little bit of elements to be designed. And uh, we had even our UX team uh, jumping into action, not only the visual design, uh, right. but the core team, we were four people uh, working on this very, very focused. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, and uh, if I can also add uh, maybe uh, the, the the best team will be with the experienced designer that needs to structure the board, needs to add the content, needs to have the purpose of the, the, the board, and then a strong visual design team that is able to express um, the, the, the activity in the visuals and all the storytelling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brilliant. So two more questions. I think we can compress two of these from the end into one. So what's the prototypes that you created and shared with the illustration and graphic designer to communicate and collaborate together? So in terms of what was the prototype like? How, how um, I, I, from, from what I understand, it's how, how do you kind of bridge your ideas mm -hmm. and the, the, let's say the concept and how did that uh, get translated to the visual designer, illustrator, graphic designer, so that you could uh, end up with, with the beautiful board that you did? Mm -hmm. I think for uh, distributed, uh, you saw we had those uh, inspiration boards about space and how space looks like. Um, we we kind of put together a little sketch about what type of boards need to be designed and then we gave them a name and uh, obviously if it's like that's a wormhole then the visual designer will have to do a wormhole so it's it's a little raw sketch we're using post-its and using basic uh, miro tools and notes uh, kind of to emphasize we had lots of iterations uh, going back and forth on our channel slack um, you know showing us okay this is how uh, the library looks like for example what do you think and then i would show a reference so it was it was a lot of back and forth happening uh, as well on the side um but the main point would be to start with uh, a lot of like ideation on how the visuals should be and inspiration that helps a lot and also maybe having um, a clear uh, understanding of the client's uh, branding so everything mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning is to have everything that you see on the mirror distributed you see nice detail with the co mirror colors and so everything must be also the look and feel the vibes and must represent the client so uh, this one must be said at, set at the beginning and then uh, what uh, also Alina said it was really crucial definitely awesome yeah. So two more questions. So what's designed by Sarah and Alina and what's designed by the graphic and illustration designer? I think you partially covered a bit. You kind of, you kind of touched on this. No limit. We, we, we got so uh, intertwined that we, we ended up designing rockets and buildings and ourselves. So we didn't, really didn't stop anywhere, guys. <laughs> But it's it's not a uh, like a pre prerequisite. You don't have to be uh, really a designer to, to do these things. You just have to have the mindset, have the ideas in your head, and be able to to translate and transfer that to the graphic designer. And maybe you can have a vision, uh, find some materials that are relevant online that would uh, kind of represent what you want and what you want to achieve. But um, it helped a lot uh, having a design background and a product background uh, to be able to to pull this through in in a fast time. Let's see. Awesome. And one interesting question, the last one we have in here. So, have you considered how to prototype smell 
as part of the experience. I'm not sure if this is a typo or the actual question. So I'll. Is that from my participant? Um, what did you ask this question? <laughs> it sounds like Mahmoud. <laughs> it sounds like Mahmoud, yeah. <laughs> Look, I think that's just another different level of reality. So we really have, we really have the, the, the digital and the sound, and this is something we, we couldn't <laughs> achieve. Well, actually, actually, we thought, we thought about uh, during the gala, uh, yeah. during the dinner gala, we were like, okay, what about if we also make people turn off like candles and like perfume we really thought about also this kind of stuff but then at the end of the day you have to also consider the efficiency of the board you have to make people be you know on the board and stuff so there is also a deal that you have to make but you never know maybe we'll someday we'll we'll do something yeah. also with the, the craziest uh, uh senses. I, I think during the jam remember Sarah when we were planning we said what if we have another surprise element and we would send people uh, donuts and coffee for the, in the, for the coffee shop experience? And of course, we couldn't manage to pull the addresses and not seem dodgy about it because there are people we don't know. So how do you do that? Uh, we said, okay, we would test it another time with a smaller crowd. Uh, but for these events, it's really tough. I mean, you could go out of your way and, and order something for them to have this particular sense. Okay, everybody's drinking coffee right now, so you know how it is, or eating something sweet. And uh, yeah, that's a mystery, guys. I hope sometime we will we will find a solution for everybody. Maybe this is also a, a call for Miro. How can Miro uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, integrate mm -hmm. this, uh, this feature? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe send out a small package to all participants with yeah, instructions like a, and how to use them yeah, depending on the exactly. line of events that you want what you want to have yeah. okay now light up okay. the yellow can yeah yeah awesome. yeah brilliant so where are the, if there's any other questions folks now is the time to pop them out in the chat if you if you feel like you have any more questions for sara or alina in the meantime uh, we'd like to collect some some feedback, so we would just kindly invite you to jump back into the mirror board for just a little second to give us a little bit of feedback, uh, just to to make it easier on you. I'm just going to paste the link in the chat one more time. Oh, not make sure to send it to everyone. And just very very quickly, um, here we have a, a matrix here with uh, things that uh, the, the amount of knowledge that you gained and the application of that knowledge. So you see you have four quadrants here that you learned a lot, but doesn't apply to you. You learned a lot and you can apply all of it. You didn't learn much and can't apply any of that, or you can apply the little that you've learned. So just take a yellow dot and just place it in the correct quadrant that best fits your scenario based on what you've uh, heard here today. Let's see where uh, I'm looking, looking great so far. That's the quick little exercise here. Awesome. Perfect. And then for the next part of the feedback session, I will uh, let Sarah and Alina, this is something that was inspired from their feedback set. So I'll let you facilitate this. Yeah, this is about, you know, easy using uh, visuals and, and sticky notes to express yourself. Some people would, you know, sometimes find it hard to say everything in one word and maybe it can be uh, an emoji or a funny sticker or a sad one maybe we would never know <laughs> yeah. so if you go back yeah, yeah go to, to to the what you think section you can copy your icons and and put them in the in the right section for what went well what could be better and what should come next uh, and we are really excited to see those coming out and and the post-its copy the post-its and fill them up. And also if uh, time is not long enough, uh, please feel free to uh, contact me or Sarah uh, via LinkedIn, send us some messages. If you have any doubts, we're really happy to help anytime, uh, you know, explore more things. <laughs>